Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to retrieve documents from Cloud Firestore using the NPM package called Firebase TS. Before we get started, be sure to watch the video on how to set up the package. The video for that is posted in the video description. Also, make sure you have created the Cloud Firestore database for your project in the Firebase Project Console. Do not forget to allow yourself to read data by setting the Firestore rules. When it comes to retrieving documents from Cloud Firestore, there are two options we can use. We can get it once by calling a method, or we can attach a listener to the document and continuously get the updates. Add the Firebase TS Firestore class to the imports, and then create a Firebase TS Firestore object. The Firebase TS Firestore class contains a method called getDocument that we can use to get the document once. It accepts an object with up to three properties. Path, onComplete, and onFail. The path property is a string array that points to a particular document in Cloud Firestore. Every even position of the array represents a collection, and every odd position represents a document. If we take a look at our Cloud Firestore database, there's a document with the ID of 1 inside collection called Users Collection. To get this document, we'll put the name of the collection and then the ID of the document. The onComplete property is a callback function that gets called when the document was successfully retrieved. It returns a result object that contains the document information. We can get the data for the document by taking a result object and accessing the data method inside. To use the data, declare a variable and then pass in the data object. If you recall, in our document, there are three pieces of data, age, hobbies, and name. To get the name, we will get our data variable and then use the dot operator to access the name property of the document. To get the age, we will use the age, and so on. Use an alert statement to print the data. If we save the project and launch our application, we will see the name and age displayed. However, as best practice, we should always create a data structure for our documents using an interface. Keep the name and types of the property the same as the document in Cloud Firestore. Then set the type of our variable to the interface and cast it to the data object. Now we can use the dot operator and see what data the document can have. Lastly, the onFail property is an optional callback function that we can use to execute code when the retrieval process was unsuccessful. We can use it to display an error message. Instead of using the alert to display the data, we can display the data inside our page using interpolation. Notice the question mark symbol. This is used to let Angular know that the variable can be null or undefined. This way, we can avoid rendering errors. When we're dealing with databases, Data may not come instantly. Sometimes, it may take a few seconds or more to get the data. During this time, the variable will be null or undefined. So to stop Angular from crashing, we need to tell that this variable can be null. 
If we save the project now, we will see it in the browser. The next thing I will talk about is how to continuously get updated information from our documents. For instance, if the data in our document have changed, the data that we're displaying is due to old data from when we call the get document method. We have to refresh the page to see the updated data. The Firebase TS Firestore class comes with a method called listen to document. The method will attach a listener object to a document and detect if any changes are made to it. This way, we can get the most updated information from our document without the need to refresh the page. It accepts an object with up to three properties, name, path, and on update. The name property is a string that we give to the listener. It helps the Firebase TS package keep track of all the listeners that are using the app. This way, we can call the stop listening to method and pass in the name of the listener that we want to stop. The path property is a string array that points to a particular document in Cloudfire Store. If we put a path to a collection, it will throw an error because the method only listens to a document. Every even position of the array represents a collection, and every odd position represents a document. We can use the same path in the getDocument method to listen to the same document. The onUpdate property is a callback function that returns the result object that contains the document information. It gets called once at the beginning to get the document, and then it will get called again when it detects a change made to the document. We can get the data from the document by taking the result object, and then accessing the data method inside. If we remove the get document method and save the project, we'll get the same results. If we change the values of our document, the values in the browser will also change. That's all for retrieving documents. If you find this video helpful, please like, Share and subscribe to support the channel. If you have questions, leave a comment. See you in the next video.